No, it's seven now. Oh, my bad. Seven degrees, ridiculous. What's going on, ladies and gents? Three, we're here for T3G along with Full Throttle. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about Windows 10 today. Lots of stuff coming up, lots of changes, lots of new features. Some features are going away. So we wanted to kind of give a, a brief overview and uh, talk about the, the fun new stuff coming up. Yeah, a lot of fun new stuff. Uh, I watched the whole two plus hours of the special event. Let me get this out of here. And um, there's a lot of features that I'll, I I want to start out by saying I hated Windows 8. So he sure did. I despised it, just like I did for Vista. <laughs> but uh, uh, I hated Windows 8, and I am extremely after watching that event. I am extremely excited for Windows 10. 10 just has a lot of great features. I think overall Microsoft as a company seems to be uh, uh, bringing along quite a few things like the HoloLens. I think that looks awesome. HoloLens looks crazy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely excited about it and I figure why not bring out some points and see which ones are, you know, the ones that really kind of stood out to us. Um, I don't know. Did you want to start? You want me to start? How do you want to do? It? Uh, I mean, you can go ahead and start. I know you you got a lot of gaming stuff you want to talk about. Well, there is gaming stuff, but I want to start off by saying my number one thing for Windows 10. Thank you, Microsoft, for finally listening to us and bringing back the start menu. Uh, but I think everybody's going to be happy with the start menu. People who enjoyed Windows 8 have the nice, uh, you know, you can expand it to look like Windows 8. And then people that like the start menu are having their start menu. You can click on all apps and it will show you just like the old start menu. So I think it's very, very cool. Uh, very happy they were, they were able to integrate both worlds into one, which should have been originally. If they did it originally, I think they would have had a lot less uh, uh, crap about Windows 8. So I'm, uh, that's one of my biggest things. I'm very happy about that. How do you feel about the... The start menu. I like the, I like the fact that it's back now. I've I've been I've been playing around with the, with the uh, technical preview for a while, and um, I like the kind of integration of the two. You got a lot of the features of the old start menu along with you've got the live tiles of the new one, which I really enjoyed. I love the live tiles. Yeah, it's yeah. one of those things that it's kind of like widgets in Windows, um, but better uh, in that they're not always on your screen and. You know, like if you want to see what the weather is, you know, you hit the start, you hit start button. You got the weather, you know, you got the weather tile. Cool, put it away. As opposed to in seven, when you had the gadgets and they were, you had to either close everything right. to see your desktop and the gadgets, right. or if you had the space for it and you weren't working in full screen or a second monitor, you, you always had them. There. Right. No, it was one of those true. things that I never really loved gadgets. I liked what they could do. Uh, but I never really loved them overall. But I, I do love the tiles, so I'm glad that, to see that they they stayed around. Absolutely. Um, and I, and I, I like the fact that it will kind of intuitively know, like, hey, we're in a touch screen tablet situation. We're going to switch to tablet mode. Everything's going to go full screen. Everything's going to go, you know, tile tile oriented. Cool. Then that's then that's nice. That's kind of what I thought eight should have been. Yeah. Um, and that's why I like the fact that you know they they're kind of stepping away from eight. You know, they just went. They made that jump to ten. Right. And um, we're we're, we're Really looking at something different. As much it is, as much as it is based on uh, the stuff that was in eight and previous OSs, I, I think there's a lot of new stuff that makes it significantly different. Right. So yeah, that's that's one of the biggest things. Of course, I'm happy for because, like you mentioned, it just it, it's given us both worlds. Windows eight users are going to be happy. Windows seven users are going to be happy. Uh, I didn't mind the tiles. I just hated that they completely ignored the the start menu in Windows 8. So if they offered both at the same time, I would have been happier with it. Now I know there were third party apps that you could bring back the start menu, but that was kind of missing the point. I shouldn't, uh, from a company like Microsoft that creates an operating system, I shouldn't have to get a third party app to do something they originally created. Right. So, and that's why they, I believe that in 8 they should have kept around and I'm very, very happy to see they're doing right in Windows 10. Now, enough talk about the star menu because I'm sure everybody's seen it, happy about it. You know, whoever wasn't happy that it wasn't there now is happy and knows about it. So let's go to the next part. My part uh, is I love that they're bringing Xbox Live to the PC. And according to them, what that means is not only does that mean you can... Uh, you know, go on your Xbox Live account, but you can also stream from your Xbox One 
So basically, you can stream gameplay. Uh, you can play your Xbox One game that's inside the Xbox One off your PC by st via stream. That's crazy. I'm I'm so happy to see that somebody's a. So you'll be able to you'll be able to play your Xbox One game from your PC by via stream. Oh, that's kind of cool. That is cool. Yeah, absolutely. I was I was excited about that. But the biggest thing that I'm excited about, which me and you always, always are like, oh, well, let's get this game. Well, we should get it on this system. Well, thanks to uh, Microsoft, PC users will now be able to play with Xbox users. Now, I don't know if that's for all titles, uh, but it's definitely a feature that's coming to the PC, which is awesome that's the whole that's another reason for the xbox live app being on the pc now is we will be able to play together so hopefully most of the newer games you'll be able to play if somebody's playing on the pc and you have an xbox one you two will be able to play together and i think that's just awesome i don't i don't know how much more i could have asked for because it's both microsoft there's no reason why we couldn't you know what i'm saying so i'm extremely happy about that also, with the Xbox Live app, and this is all part of the one app, is uh, no longer will you require third-party software to record gameplay footage. So if you're a person that uh, puts videos of game footage on YouTube or even streams to Twitch, that will be all available through the Xbox Live app, and I just, I, I can't say That's more. pretty That's awesome. That's awesome. That That's just pretty awesome. saves I'm, I'm, money for yeah, people. I think that, that'll be very interesting to... To see in application, because that's the thing is, screencasting. What well, so many people do it that you know, there's a few companies that that have made apps that do it really well. Yeah, and you know, software that does it exceptionally well. And then you have all these kind of outliers, little you know, small companies or you know, freeware stuff, and it, none of it really up to that standard. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be interested to see where the Xbox app takes that is it going to be good is it going to crash like raptor software all the time yeah right <laughs> that's the problem we have we and uh me and him have both have amd cards and the raptor software did of course install maybe three patches ago four patches ago mm -hmm. with amd that's what they released and it is in theory a great software unfortunately it does not work well, uh, especially right. for uh, video recordings and certain issues that it causes. So I can't wait to see how well Windows incorporates this. Obviously, it's going to be a lot more up-to-date because they can release a patch on a weekly basis if they have to, to fix it because it's part of the OS now. Sure. So where, granted, so can, uh, so can AMD, and they did for a while, but then... They kind of switch to like a monthly update thing for some odd reason. Sure. And, you know, that, that's why. I mean, once you hit a certain point, you've covered the majority of the market. Right, right. You know, the few outliers, they can wait. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, but, yeah, so I'm excited about that. And then I have one one final one that I can think of right, uh, that I could write down. But there's, I'm sure there's more while you're going to mention yours. But it's free for Windows 7 and 8 users. I mean, absolutely. In all honesty. 8.1. Uh, 8.1, my apologies. It has to and be 8.1. And in all honesty, good job, Windows. Like, finally, you, you needed to do that. Uh, I personally wish it was also for Windows Vista users because they are still out there. And They're still way, out there. They've got, what, two years left? 2017 yeah. is the last year of Vista, um, of, you know, support for Vista, rather, uh, which really does spell the end of Vista. Um, I, I think it should have been made available, but I think it's going to depend on the system requirements. You got to remember, Vista came out kind of at a weird time where hardware prices were still at that kind of higher point, and you had system, you had laptops, you had desktops going out with only two gigs of RAM with Vista, which was inconceivable. Right. Uh, which which was part of the reason people hated Vista was because they they bought all these you know new systems that were grossly underpowered yeah and that it just it fed that hate because it was just a bad experience top to bottom because it doesn't make sense for you know hp or dell or whoever to make a desktop with eight gigs of ram which is really to have a really nice experience sure. in in vista that's what you needed when eight gigs of ram cost more than the rest of the computer yeah, absolutely uh, so absolutely. you know it's one of those things that it just didn't make sense at the time so you know thankfully when when uh Seven came around. It was four was kind of the standard, right? Uh, and then with eight, it didn't really matter because it it even had lower requirements. 
Uh, now that's actually I, I forgot to look at that. I, I don't know what the actual requirements are. But what are you what are you running it on on at home? Well, I have uh, four gigabytes of DDR2. I'm not sure of the speed. I want to say six six seven. Okay. Uh, and it's a dual core old Phenom uh, on the AM, right, right. Uh, AM1, I believe. If that was a socket, I can't remember. AM2, yeah, isn't it? Maybe AM2. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. Possibly AM2, but it is a dual core old Phenom dual core. And I will say this. I mean, and then we gotta also remember the software is in what beta right now. It's so, yeah, it's still very much in beta. I would even, I would even stretch it to say alpha, just because right. of certain things I'm gonna talk about. Absolutely, but basically, on that particular setup, it does not run smooth. It does run, and overall, it's usable. But it's not as smooth. There's definitely uh, like jitters and, and lag spikes here and there, uh, which obviously, lag. obviously, which which sucks. But at the same time, once again, like he said, it might almost be alpha technically at this point uh, because there's just so many things they have to work on making sure that it works properly. Now I am looking at the specs here, and it looks like for Windows 10, uh, it is said to be that they are going to be same requirements as 8.1. So one gigahertz or faster uh, processor. Single core. Think about Single that. core, Single that's core. correct. Uh, one gigabyte of RAM, 32 bit, or two wow. gigabytes for 64 bit. Makes sense. Uh, 16 gigabytes on 32 bit for hard drive space requirement, and 20 gigabytes for 64 bit, which, I mean, most people it's have 500 or it's more. It's almost so impossible no way, not to meet that. Right, and even if you have an SSD at 120 gigabytes, you're still fine um, right. and then of course it will uh, your graphics card that's going to be required to be able to at least have DirectX 9 um, yeah so that's that's basically the main requirements that I'm seeing here which honestly it's not bad at all um, I mean if you have the system that I have overall what they're stating is you shouldn't have any problems so that's yeah. good once again like I said my problems could be just literally because the software is still not done now granted uh, yeah. Uh, uh, from what I understand, some of the architecture, now I'm not a programmer or anything like that, but from what I understand, some of the architecture is the same as Windows 8. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I don't see why there should be too many glitches, but at the same time, they are adding a lot of features. So mm -hmm. you're going to expect glitches when features are being added, even if it's to something that's already been available. So, yeah, I mean... Right now, you'll notice glitches, and we'll we'll go into separate reviews about our experience with yeah, we'll Windows some 10. Um, but overall, that uh, overall those requirements are just absolutely amazing. I mean, to have that for a yeah. system like this. Yeah, I mean, to, to look back and to say that seven required two gigs minimum. Right. Uh, four if you had sixty four gigs. Right. It, it, or sixty four bit. I mean, it, it was very much. I mean. The, the difference was enormous. I was able to install Windows Windows 8 when it first came out on single core, two gigs oh, yeah. of RAM from 2004. And the only thing that didn't work right was the graphics. It had a bit of a lag because it was just such an old card. Um, but I'm running a, I'm running the technical preview on uh, i5 with six gigs of RAM, and I'm still getting hiccups here and there and yeah. some, some lag times. Uh, Cortana, which is... By far one of my favorite features, dog slow, right now. I'll say right now because I really want that to be a great feature of this. I really want them to optimize that to, to a usable level. Right now she is dog slow, but she is fantastic. As good, I will say once it's optimized and working properly, I will say Cortana will be better than the Google Voice feature. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I mean, the way they demonstrated it in the uh, Windows, or I'm sorry, the Microsoft event, uh, it absolutely, it, it looks like, it ran really smooth overall. And even they said in the beginning of the event, you know, we are showing you stuff that's still in development, so we're going to probably experience hiccups while we try to show you this. And honestly, everything went really smooth. And from what it looked like, Cortana, uh, Cortana was running smoothly as well. Uh, overall, it understood everything that he was saying via mic, so it was detecting him while he was talking to the audience. Sure. Uh, which is impressive. I mean, for it to be able to pick up your voice even through speakers, I'm sure they had it maybe set up differently, but overall, that's still very impressive, and it was smooth. Now, then again, the version they were running could be different 
It could be a version that yeah, we could were be, having it could be a newer available. build. It could right. be the next build. I mean, there's just any number of things about it that could be different. But I really like a lot of the stuff that they're doing. So, well, I want to stay on Cortana real quick because sure. I said to you, <laughs> Cortana is the new Skynet because literally the way they describe Cortana in the event is it is a uh, uh, a how can I put this? I'm trying to remember the words they used, but digital assistant. It is a digital assistant that constantly uh, learns about you and goes on the internet to learn about where you go, the weather. If, so, yeah, if you so it's constantly it's constantly learning about your habits and your surroundings. So the, it's the NSA like won't Skynet. have the NSA <laughs> won't have to hack you. They'll just ask Cortana for like right. And Cortana will be like, I'll be happy to provide that information. I have it all. It's categorized. So some people, <laughs> um, you know, there have always been talks about how much do you want a computer or some particular system to know about you? How sure. much information can it have? And yes, that can be definitely worrisome even with Cortana. But I think it's really impressive for it to be able, for us to get into this point, to have a system to basically learn on its own mm -hmm. is impressive. I mean, to yeah. get that far, to get that kind of technicality out of something, that's all. Uh, that's absolutely, I mean, it's staggering. It's, I, I'm very impressed with it. And to come from Microsoft, I'm even more impressed. <laughs> <laughs> the nice thing about it is if you are like myself, like I really enjoyed the old start screen. So uh, there is an option to turn on tablet mode. Now, I don't know if this will be available in the final build for everyone. Right. Uh, they said it will automatically switch between tablet mode and the uh, the desktop mode, depending on what kind of device it's on. It will figure that out, uh, which, like, like I said earlier, that's what I thought 8 should have done. Yeah. Uh, so I'm glad that they finally built that in, and that's going to be finally utilized the proper way. So for something like your convertible laptops, you know, if it has a way to figure out, hey, your dock, there's a keyboard attached, we're going to go desktop mode. The answer is yes. Well, that's what I'm talking because about. That's, the that's, event that's, that's a smart way to do in, it. In the event, they specifically show you that feature. Perfect. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's that's a great feature. That's one of those things where it, it's, that's the kind of intuitive, you know, feature that you need for yes. a system to be fresh and new. Because let's look at it this way. Windows is Windows is Windows is Windows. Yeah, absolutely. At the end of the day, some of the file, like some of the organization has changed. The interface has obviously changed more recently dramatically. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you still have your file folders. You still have your documents yeah. folder. You still have your pictures folder. You know, you, you can still get to your stuff still the same exact way. They're talking about this new uh, settings app. So they have the settings app which is supposed to be your unified, well, that's where you fix and change anything. Well, control panel's still there for those of us who really like control panel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can still go into the control panel, and now will it be there at the end? Who knows? Right. You know, they might remove it. I hope they don't. I hope control panel remains accessible, because I really, really like control panel. The settings app is nice. It's very clean. Um, I don't like the fact that, uh, for instance, like they took off this feature where... In 7, if you clicked on the Wi-Fi icon, it popped up the little list of the Wi-Fi networks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you do it right now, it'll show you a little list of Wi-Fi networks. Yeah. In 8.8 and 8.1, .8 if you did that, it slid in from the side. So still kind of in the same area. Sure, sure. Just like a taller list, right. basically. In 10, it opens a whole thing. It opens the app. It oh, opens wow. a settings app. So it has a bit of a lag to it because it's opening a larger thing. Yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of like, uh, that's not necessary. That doesn't need to be there. Now, will I get used to that? Maybe. Who knows? Right. You know, there might be there might be an easier way to do that once you're in final build and things like that. But there's just certain things that, um, as much as I like everything that's coming out, um, yeah, all this other stuff that I, that, I, that I had kind of marked is pointless. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we've either already talked about it or it's just not something that I really want to talk about. Right, right. Um, the, the biggest stuff is I, I, I do have some gripes. I, I've got... You know, as much as I excited as I am for Cortana, like I said, she's dog slow. Yeah. Um, you can't how you can like even on seven and Vista, you hit the start menu, you start, you type in the app, type hit enter, yeah, it launches. Yeah, you can't do that in Cortana. 
Because there is no search. There is Cortana. Oh, that's right. If you turn yes. off Cortana, you can use the normal search. Mm. So that's something that I'm not a huge fan of. Right. You know, and I'd, I'd be happy to, because I know on the phone, Cortana will launch apps for you. Sure. So I hope that's in the final build. Well, that needs to really be in the final the way, build. I need to be able to hit start, type in W-O-R, and hit enter, and word launches. I've been able to do that for the last 10 years. There's well, no the reason way, why I should be able to do that. The way they were now. demonstrating it is when you type in W-O-R, she will pull up Word, but she'll also pull up other things that might sure. be associated with those As long letters. as the first thing is Word, right. and I hit Enter and Word opens. That's because that's what they were showing <laughs> once again in the event. He was typing could, in, and then it showed the main thing he was looking for, but then, of course, other yeah. things that might be associated with those lettering right, right, right. or maybe within, uh, within that program. Right. So that's definitely... Uh, that's definitely interesting. I, I hope, I hope all the features for Cortana are uh, associated with the search menu, so that sure. way we do have the same function. Yeah. Because I agree with you. That's what I do sometimes. If I don't want to specifically look for the program, exactly. just type in the word or you most know, of the word. You don't use it often, so it's right. not on your desktop. It's not on your you know taskbar. But you do want to run it once in a while. You don't want to have to go through all the folders or go through the pro program files. Right. No, it's nice to have that feature of knowing that like if your system is indexed and, and searched, you go into your search and you can just access your app. So Absolutely. I really like that concept. The other thing that I really uh, am kind of disillusioned with is OneDrive. Uh, with 8.1, uh, really 8.1 specifically, because this wasn't a feature with 8, it was really going into 8.1 that they mm -hmm. brought this in. They had something, I think they called them smart files. Okay. Um, and basically what it would do is it would take a snapshot of your entire OneDrive and put it on your computer. Right. And so then you would be able to access like, where your file structure is and all that stuff in OneDrive, but it wouldn't take up the same amount of space. Right. There'd be placeholders. Right. And then you could say, all right, I want this folder always synced on, on everything and you can access that whereas with 10 it doesn't have that feature you have to download everything well from what they were the way they were talking they want to keep that feature inside of windows 10. what's up hi hi um so yeah they were they were saying that they wanted that feature or at least the way they were describing it in the event, that that feature is going to be the same. Okay, because that's, um, I mean, that's a huge thing. I hope they don't get rid of that. Especially, that yeah, no cause especially if you have a system like with this SSD, you have 256 on a you know portable laptop. Right. Let's say you have the terabyte of, of, of OneDrive that comes with your Office 365, right. and you're using it. Right. Well, you, you don't have the space for that. No, absolutely. I, mean, from yeah, I don't want to be. I don't have to be selective and be like, all right, well, I do want this folder, and then like this subfolder. Like, I don't want to do that. That's nonsense. From, from what I understand, they definitely wanted to keep that feature, at least from the way they were explaining. I hope in so. The, I the, hope so. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna push that right now. I'm gonna need you to go and and push that and get feedback. <laughs> There's a, a group feedback. So it's, it's nice. That's the other nice thing I can say about it is I know it's an alpha and stuff like that. So the feedback is done in such a nice way that uh, I've done betas before for other things. And it was just kind of like fill this form out, send it in. Right. Whereas this, the way it's done is once you start searching your subject, it brings up other people's stuff and popular things. Which is awesome because with Windows Insider, um, just like you said, you can get, everybody puts their comments in and they see these comments. Yeah, and they, they might not get back to you directly, but they probably, will unless there's, you know, a specific right, problem. Exactly. But they will definitely address it, which is, which is great to see them do this because, <clears throat> in my opinion, the same mistake that was made in Windows Vista where they didn't listen and then they listened for 7 right. is the same problem they did with 8 and then now going into 10 because they're listening for 10. But for eight, they didn't because if they listened, they would have known people don't want to lose the start menu. You know what I'm right. saying? So that was, I, you know, I, I always call that guy, you know, that guy, that guy, that guy Phil in the, in the boardroom. In one the day boardroom. I was like, we should just get rid of the, the start menu. That's a brilliant like, idea. <laughs> Phil, Phil, you got those new ideas. And then, you know, when it came out, everyone was like, where is the freaking start menu? They were like, Phil, you're freaking fired. Get out of here before I get you killed. Yeah, exactly. Like, so Phil was fired hardcore. Um, so, yeah, I'm... Um, there's definitely a lot of features. They went over a lot more into detail, which yeah, I, I mean, there's tons and tons uh, of stuff happening. You know, uh, the HoloLens is definitely something that's part of... Uh, Windows 10 and yeah. environment. Yeah, Hollow, yeah, HoloLens. We're just kind of yeah, going into it a little bit. You know, we'll link to some videos. Uh, but HoloLens is really cool because it's a full-on VR headset. It gives you full view of everything. Right. 
but then you basically, like, you can have live tiles on your wall. And instead of having a TV physically on your wall, you literally project a play screen. Yeah. yeah so then crazy. you're like, I want a bigger one. And you just drag it bigger. Yeah. Which is insane to me. Yeah. Uh, th they, they played around that, like, Minecraft thing where you can, like, build Minecraft. Right, right, right. And that's cool to me. But it's but still crazy. The it's... biggest thing for me is, like, they showed the, the one woman working on that motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. And that, to me, is, like, I think I could do really well with 3D. If I could physically like yeah. like um, yeah, like Tony Stark, yeah. where you just like you physically, physically manipulate it, manipulate that's it. Yeah. you know. So if I had forward. like, because they do uh, what is it? I think Maya. Maya has the no zebra. Zebra starts with like a clay model, right? So ZBrush, like in ZBrush, if I could just physically yeah. mess with it, dude, that'd be awesome in three yeah, D. No, absolutely. So Hololens is definitely one of those features that's going to be awesome part of Windows Ten. Uh, also, as well, they talked about. Um, the office and the way it's going to act between the desktop and the mobile. Oh yeah, versions. continuum. Um, uh, continuity. 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 Yeah. Is what it's continuum uh, is uh, Apple. <laughs> yeah. Which is the same thing. That's why it's called basically the same but, thing. But um, I'm not going to lie to you. When when the event came to office, I wasn't paying as much attention to it. So I don't know all the newest features. I mean, obviously the way it's well, going to look is going to be really the same. Like. Uh, it's basically the same program in w Windows 10 and on the mobile Windows 10. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot more. The same program is just displayed just a little differently, so it can fit on the screen. Sure, That's it's it. it's more it's so they they're, they've it reinforced the touch compatibility of it. They just released actually today, I think, uh, the touch uh, for Android tablets. Right. So touch office for Android tablets. Um, it's just a lot more compatibility with the touch interface while keeping more of the features. That was kind of one of the big things with uh, mobile office previously uh, when it was on Windows Phone. There, were, like you lost some features, whereas now they're working to really bridge that whole thing together yeah, and make really it more that was of the, the same thing. features across everything. So then you can come home and you can, if you really want to, plug you know turn on your Xbox. I was waiting for it to respond. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, so you can turn it on and then, you know, view the same website that you were just viewing, yeah. which would be awesome. I mean, I think that'd be fantastic. Or if you were playing your Xbox game on your Windows tablet, and you come home and you play it on the Xbox. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, just continue on. Like, that's the kind of stuff that's really cool and because of, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to fluff Microsoft's ego too much, but right. like being, having that huge ecosystem I, I think it would, it, it's fantastic. Yeah. I if they bring certain features now, I'm not happy if this isn't if this is gone for for tablets on eight in eight point one. You would swipe down to close an app. Okay. You would swipe it to close. Sure. That's what's on my surface. I don't have that feature in ten. Even in tablet mode, it's not there. You still have to hit the X. Now I'm hoping that's not true because I don't have a tablet. Right. I'm hoping that's only for tablets, but right now, I, like from what I understand, because that was the thing. That was another thing that was pointed because he was showing difference between when it's plugged into the keyboard and recognizing its desktop and when it's not. Sure. And that definitely he showed that as he a showed feature. Like now, yeah. okay, because that was one of those things that I said that if Android somehow built that in, if that's how I closed apps mm -hmm. instead of the like popping up that all app screen and closing right. all apps. If that's how I close the apps, dude, I would never switch from Android for the rest of eternity. Well, the thing <laughs> like is, that, like, like, that's that one on. feature that I really want. It's the same reason that, like, there's Android features that they're the reason that I don't get a Windows phone. <laughs> well, that's what uh, another thing they brought up is all about how closing apps and stuff like that can be different and, and switching between apps. So they're working on all tab being a little different, too. So Alt-Tab now, from what I understand, you can actually, when you have Alt-Tab open, you can actually, from there, uh, click on the program, swipe it, move it to a desktop, because I think they're going to have multiple yeah, desktops. Yeah, they do have multiple well. desktops, which is fantastic. So, so that, fantastic. that's all that's going to be part of now the Alt-Tab feature as well. So you're not only going to have the swipe down feature in the tablet mode, but you're going to have something similar for the desktop mode as well. So it's that's it's kind of interesting to see how they're doing all of that's that. That's cool. They're kind of bridging those, like that 7 features and the, the, the 8.1 features together. And that's what I think is this is going to be, is, I think is going to be the best of both worlds. Yeah. And um, I'm just really excited for it. If they stay true to form, uh, now I don't have anything confirming this or anything, but if they stay true to form, I think 
October. October is probably likely when we're going to see that. Uh, Surface launched in October. I think 8.1 launched like August, September. Right. Um, so. I wouldn't be surprised to see us sometime in the fall. Yeah, they Maybe said they minor. said 2015. They didn't. I don't even th think they specified. A no, quarter. they just said 2015. Yeah, they said 2015. So, I mean, I would beat the Christmas rush. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if, if I was making that decision, I would beat the Christmas yeah, rush. Yeah, because then by you're, then you're, you're these all new computers yeah, with all Windows new 10. Devices with Windows 10, so you can you can. Which means if that. you really want an 8.1 device, uh, probably November is like clearance time. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, but yeah, um, is there anything else you want to talk about Spartan by any chance? Uh, Spartan, yeah. So I'm really excited about the new, the new, the new browser. They're basically given Internet Explorer its uh, much deserved rest. Uh, it's going to rest in peace, hopefully, or in pieces, whichever. Um, and Spartan is supposed to replace it. Now they don't have it in the technical preview yet, so I, I really don't know much about it. It's supposed to have more of a Chrome slash Firefox feel now. Um, which I really thought that 11 had really kind of went into that direction already as it was. So I, I don't know what much more to expect. Uh, there's not a whole lot of difference to me as far as interface. Well, they, your, did, your show it, they did show it in the event. Okay. Um, one of the biggest things was that Cortana is built into Spartan as well. See that'd be cool because that's like that's that Google Plus thing where yeah. like if you go to Google.com, yeah. you can say oh, you can talk to Google if you have a mic on your computer. Whereas if it's built into to uh, Spartan, right. which I really hope they leave that name. If it's built, that's into, a good name. I like. Spartan. Yeah, I really like it. So I like, I like the fact that they're bringing in that other stuff that they own and kind of for the naming because Cortana is from Halo. Spartan is you know Master Chief is a Spartan. Right. Um, so I really like that concept and. Uh, I, I, if it's built into Spartan, so if you're just you know browsing and then well, you're say hey you know hey Cortana and it's gonna search and which basically then you are because yeah well it's the, live what's on. cool is right here it mentions so if a person let's say looks up a restaurant on Spartan Cortana will throw in a map a menu and contact details all in one so like it's gonna be on the side so like you search let's say a restaurant on your left side of the screen your main part you'll see search results, but on the right, uh, it'll show you that uh, that particular restaurant's contact details, when it's open and closed, That's and cool. also the menu of it. So it's it gets really You really that. watched that whole thing, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, two hours, guys. Two, two plus hours. Two uh, plus hours. I will, I, say do this. It. I, I will say this. It was a very, very awkward uh, event because... They were, every time they would say something, they're hoping for an applause, and no applause <laughs> happened. So, Ooh, uh, rough. but here's the thing. Um, in my opinion, if you're Microsoft and you made a big, to some people they didn't, but most people you made a big mistake with A. Okay, you didn't right. do what people wanted. So, you just released A for the sake of doing something new, but not listening to what others wanted. And you messed up. So when you come back and you're showing all these new impressive things, they're impressive, but people are right it's now. Gotta it's got to work right. It's got to work. Yeah, right. they're it's waiting it's... to hear the catch or how <laughs> badly catch. it's working because this is not their first time not listening. Windows Vista was the first time, so this is second time. So now people are just like, okay, well we're not going to get our hopes up. So you're not going to get an applause, Microsoft. I'm sorry. You were waiting for it every time because they, you know, they had those pause breaks because they were like, they say something and pause, and it's like, no, sorry, buddy, you're not getting it. That's you also got to realize the room was filled with uh, journalists, uh, filled with insiders, uh, people that are going to be, you, you know, after the event they're going to have hands on with the hollow lens and stuff. So these are all people that are reporting on the fly, and you're not. Those people are most likely they're not going to pay attention to your pause and give you an applause sure. they're most likely what they're doing is and you can see from the cameras most of those people are like they're typing, typing, in, they're in, typing as articles. you're talking so they can type their article and the others that are not typing are taking the pictures or the video sure. so you're not going to get an applause in that kind of audience uh, it's different when Apple does their events uh, because it's a mixture of the two you know they have their news people but they also have the people that are excited about sure. it and just want to see this, and so they give that applause. But it was it was fairly uh, awkward in that. And, and in on that, that note, on that kind of comparison to Apple, I we, we talk about the fact that it was free, and this is kind of the last thing I want to point out. Yeah, it's for, so it's free for the first year if you have Windows Seven or Eight Point One. Um, 
I hope that that just continues on. Yeah, um, yeah. So there's no for reason. the first year, so that'll be what twenty end of twenty sixteen going into twenty seventeen. Right. So that's basically you're forcing the hand of anybody who has Vista to buy a new computer. Yeah. Uh, buy a new computer or update your OS. You're unlikely to do that. Most people will not buy a new OS. Right. Um, just because, just because they don't know how to update it. They don't know how to upgrade it. Plus, and it's depending on the price. It's around one hundred twenty plus dollars. So. Right. Yeah. Depending on you know if, if they're buying. Uh, you know, right now we, we happen to pick up Windows 8.1 on sale, yeah. but normally the cheapest one with, you know, no support for Microsoft is $99. Yeah. So for $100, people don't know what they're doing, so they're not going to do that. They'll spend the 250 and buy a POS computer and yep. think that it's going to really do the job for them. So they're really forcing the hand of Vista users to, to buy a new computer by the end of 2016, because going into 2017, because uh, I think if they're going to do it at the same time... Um, 2017 is the last year, so then January or whatever, April 2018 is right. probably going to be the last time that they put out a Windows Vista update. Right. Um, so, which is which is fine. There's really nothing wrong with that. that everything has to have an end of life. Uh, I like the fact that they've they, they made that announcement. They said, yeah. listen, these are the dates. Yeah. After this, no more updates, no more support. Sorry. Absolutely. Sorry, thanks for playing. You know, on, on the flip side of things, you know, Apple doesn't really, as far as I've, I've seen, they don't really cut off their stuff. It's just right. like, you roll with it, and if, if your computer will support the, the newest one, it'll then support it. Support if it don't, if, not, if it don't. Then not, yeah. You know, if it don't, it don't. Um, and they don't really put, like, a moratorium, you know. Their last, what, four? Six, seven, eight, yeah, so four. Yeah. Four are still technically, you know, current. Right. So, you know, whereas really... Microsoft's like the last three. Two, three, yeah, technically, but, but let's be serious. But, the, but they're like the third one's going to fall right, off exactly. in a year and a half. Right. So after that, you're done. I'm right. sorry. And even then after that, like four years later, seven falls off. Yeah. So and, it, everything has an end of life, which which means that they're working on making the next thing, which yeah. is good. They're going to continue on working on, on something newer. Now, I would like them to go into the Apple model of software. So now I'm going to have Windows 10 for free. If Windows 11 is not free, I better still get Windows 10 for free. Right. You know, I own the latest version. I need to have the latest version. You're not going to switch me like that. Uh, they need to be able to, you know, if, if I'm, you know, I'm downloading a free copy of Windows 10, that means that no matter what I do, I own Windows 10 as a software. Yeah. I should be able to install it on any computer I want. Yeah. I, I, I don't see why that's, you know... And they better not play those games with me like they did with, with 8. Because 8, that, the Samsung, he better not get a virus ever. Red X bought my Samsung off me, my laptop, and it's got 8.1. The problem is it's an upgrade-only copy. Right. If we have to reinstall, we have to install 7 and then upgrade. Right. Which is annoying. That is shit. annoying. I hope they don't do it that way because that, that better because I will not play those games. Extreme, <laughs> that is extreme. I will annoying. not play those. I games. hope it's a. I hope it's a. It's an update or an upgrade, however you want to call it, to where it overrides the previous OS. So yeah. basically, hey, you had Windows 8. You just upgraded 10. From now on, anytime you want to install or reinstall, it's going to be Windows 10. Period. No, which I'm fine about with. It. But I need to be able, like, I need to be able to perform an erase and reinstall. Absolutely, absolutely. Without having to play this like three, four step, you know, upgrade game. Yeah, because could you imagine if you go from, let's say you upgraded from Windows 7 to Windows 8, like his laptop is, and then from there upgrade to, so now you ever have to reinstall? You are you telling me I have that's to go from seven, eight, then ten? That's, that's, that's three installations, and that is not that is not the way to go. But I agree with you. I mean, on the final thoughts, um, I hope they keep it free forever. I, I mean, hope they keep I don't it free. See why I hope they not. keep it free. I, I really hope they adopt that not. Apple Apple motto of like you know you've got you've got Office, you got like with three sixty five technically, if you're paying for the for the you know annual, which I am, um, technically I guess you do have Office. You only have five copies, but you do have you own Office and you can install it on five computers. Right. And like as many tablets as you want, so that's cool. Right. Um, but like, I want them to go go that way. With, I agree with Windows. I agree because I, I fine. I mean, if you don't want to give me, you know, as many computers as I want, sure. Five licenses. I'm cool with five licenses. Five licenses because I have five, I have a few systems in my home that absolutely. are mine. Absolutely. And I shouldn't have to buy for each one of those a Windows system because 
they're mine. <laughs> like, right. It's not like I'm giving them to anybody. Right, they exactly. are mine. Exactly. You know, it, it, and yeah. I, I, I'm cool with it being tied to my my Microsoft account. Right. That's that makes sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's like I own that with my Microsoft account. That's you know I need to be able to log into all of those computers with my Microsoft Agreed. account. Agreed. And you know, I think that's where it needs to be. I think it needs to be free. And I think it needs to be on multiple devices. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're gonna do our our, our kind of tours of Windows 10, yeah, our we'll own do, individual we'll thoughts on ones. Spe specific features. Um, I don't know how integrated it is with Xbox right now. We might have to might have to try that out. We might have to give that a shot. But uh, yeah, look for those videos coming up soon, or video depending on how we decide to do it. Right. Uh, but yeah, thanks guys for watching. Uh, make sure to leave comments below on what your favorite features were. Absolutely. Because uh, we definitely would like to see those. Uh, for me, it was the gaming stuff because I'm a gamer. But yeah, I really like Cortana. Make sure, make sure you guys put that down because we definitely want to see what you guys thought of it. If you watched the event or maybe even just the cliff notes of the event, give us your feet. You know, give us your top features or even one of them that you are excited about Windows 10. Yeah, what's your, what's even, your favorite? Or what's even your if favorite you're excited Windows about Windows 10. So, or if you hate it, whatever. Yeah. just talk to us. Yeah, just we want to talk to you. Yeah. We like you guys. Definitely. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure you guys check out C3GTech.com. Like, subscribe, check out Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. We still have that Facebook contest going on. So if you uh, if you get us to 100 likes, we've still got those Audio, right, yes. Audio Technica headphones and another one of those routers from back, from uh, last year uh, are still available. We're still going to give those away at 100 likes. So if you guys like the Facebook page, uh, we're going we're to talk about the rules for that once we get closer to 100. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Pretty much, that's it. That's it. Thank you guys for watching. Cerebro. Full throttle. Signing off.